Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Dan Stoltz. I'll be uh, leading this session today. Um, and I'm right after lunch, so uh, it's my challenge to keep you awake. I will do my best. Um, I work for Microsoft, um, but I'm here to talk to you really about my blog, um, some of the things that I've done, and share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years on uh, driving a lot of traffic to your blog. Uh, there's lots of different reasons why people will want to drive traffic to the blog. Usually it's because, you know, either they want to increase their influence or, uh, you know, have customers find them or whatever. So the, the tips and tricks that I'll be teaching with you, teaching you today, there's a ton of them. I don't want to um, blow you away. Um, you don't have to do everything that I'm going to suggest that is going to help. Uh, but the more of them that you put into uh, your environment, into your blog or your website, um, the more success you'll likely have. Um, and in fact, some of them, uh, some of the ones that I'll be talking about, I don't even do myself um, for whatever reason. I'll explain that as, as we go along. Um, a little about me, though. I've been with Microsoft for a little over five years. Um, my blog for the last three years has been on the top ten Microsoft individual blogger list uh, pretty consistently. Um, this last month, um, I, um, I drew 72,000 unique visitors to my blog. Um, and unique visitors for Microsoft is counted by unique IP addresses. Um, so like when you guys visit me today, if I have 50 people visit my blog today, it's going to count as one, right? Actually, it's not even going to count as one because I've already hit my blog today, so that was the one for, for this IP address. Um, and, it's, um, and it's per month. So anybody that hits me from Nerd this month counts as one person. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty stringent the way that they measure unique, uh, unique visitors. Um, and um, um, I've shared a lot of the tips that I, that I put into my blog with some of the other Microsoft bloggers and it's had um, a pretty phenomenal impact on them and their reach. Um, as you know, with Microsoft, uh, you know, Microsoft is a breadth organization. They want to get a lot of information out to a lot of people as quickly as possible. So uh, blogging has become a really good platform for, for them to be able to do that. Um, <coughs> most of the things I blog about are Windows Server, uh, System Center, and the Microsoft Cloud. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the individual posts that I've done, um, but I know very few people in here are going to be blogging about those things. But all the things that I'm going to be teaching you today are not tied to the technology that I blog about, but rather tied to blogging in general. Um, and uh, that's just the abstract for today. So um, one of the things that you want to consider whenever you're talking about uh, building incredible reach um, is how, how to deliver those results and understanding your competitive uh, objectives. So before you write a blog post, you have to think to yourself, what do I want to, why, why am I doing this? And what do I want to achieve as a result of this blog post? If that's not your first step, you're never going to get um, the kind of results that you want, or you're never going to really exponentially increase your traffic. Because it does take a little extra thought process. That doesn't take a whole lot of time. It takes seconds, um, sometimes a minute. It doesn't take a lot of time, but it is a step that needs to be done. Um, number one is to give. Give customers what they want. And I say, I, I use the, the word customer loosely. Um, the customer might be your friends, it might be people that you're talking to in your blog, um, people that you're uh, reaching out to in your website, however, uh, however you want to look at it. And oh, by the way, whenever I say blog, I mean literally blog, but a lot of people use a blog as a website, and a lot of people leverage their blog to promote their website. Um, and a blog can be an incredible tool to drive people to your website so that they can ultimately understand your services, the services that you provide, um, and uh, hopefully buy if that's what you want, want them to do. Um, you want to be able to, you want to, uh, to inspire them to act. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you a lot of different techniques for actually doing that. Um, blog is typically going to be a, a tool or mechanism for broad um, distribution of information. You know, it's not going to be as effective as picking up the phone and calling somebody, um, but it's going to be a whole lot more scalable. Um, there's no way in the world that I could reach 72,000 people every month, month over month, um, by any means other than a broad reach type of a scenario. We'll talk a little bit about SEO, uh, search engine optimization, syndication, um, uh, analytic numbers. Analytic numbers basically is uh, um, tracking what's going on, tracking the success that you're having on the different posts that you're having. Um, and we'll talk about why that's important as well. Um, and um, uh, whenever, you're, whenever you're thinking about blogging, what you get out of it, out of it is going to be directly proportionate to what you put into it. So if you apply one or two of the techniques that I, that I talk to you about today, you'll get some level of results. But the more of them you apply, the better off that you'll be. Um, and you it's really, really, really important 
um, to start developing relationships if you don't already have them, or you know, whenever you come to events like this, uh, you know, certainly reach out to the, reach out to the speakers and, and the other attendees and kind of get to know them. Um, you know, follow follow things on follow what's going on on Twitter. You know, uh, look at the people that are putting out comments on Twitter or, or information out on Twitter, um, and be, kind of become get involved in those in the social media side of things. And you'll you'll find that you can leverage those different tools to really help you grow your reach. Um, so the bottom line is what we're, what we're really trying to do is if your blog now is at, at, at you know at 2,000, some of these techniques can get you to 10,000 unique users literally in a matter of less than a year, um, six months, nine months, easily a year. Um, some people could get all the way up to 25 uh, 25,000. Uh, you know, take that 10,000 to 25,000 um, easily in nine months. Okay, so this is not something that takes a lot of time to get to. If you apply a lot of the techniques that I that I put in here, and my reach could be in the millions if I gave it more time. I give my blog um, on average about four hours, four to eight hours a month um, is what time is the amount of time that I give my blog. At one point, whenever I was at zero to one thousand unique visitors a month, um, I invested a lot more time to get set up and running. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time, but the time that you put into it, make sure it's productive time, and I'll, and I'll show you what productive time means. All right, so um, give customers what they want. Deep technical content. For me, it's deep technical content. Um, and if you go to my blog, my blog is itproguru.com, if you guys missed it on the first screen. And, and by the way, to contact me, it's itproguru, um, or my email, itproguru at microsoft.com. Um, um, deep technical content, I find, is what drives people to my blog. They find me through Bing, they find me through Google. Google is my number one referrer, number one, uh, by far. And it's not just Google in the US, it's Google all over the world, uh, because there's different, different uh, uh, Google referrals. Um, Google is by far my number one referral. Um, solve problems. You know, what problems are the people that you want to reach, what problems are they having? If you go solve those problems, they'll find you. Um, and whenever you put a solution out there, make sure it's a complete solution. You know, whenever I first started blogging, uh, I was going and looking at other people's blogs and seeing what they were doing. Um, and, you know, I would notice that whenever I tried to do the same things that they were teaching me how to do, I would get stuck. Uh, you know, they wouldn't give me all of the steps. Yep. The, will the slides be posted? The slides are posted right now. If you want to download and take notes on the slides, itproguru.com forward slash resources, or go to my homepage and click on the resources, um, and they're right there on, on the very top of that page. There's a link to it. Thank you. Um, so frequency and timing, uh, you do want to blog regularly. You know, I said 48 hours a month. That's not four to eight hours a month, one time sitting down for four or eight hours. That is, you know, uh, every week or at least every two weeks, you're doing something on on your blog. And one of the things that I'll do is I will I will work on things that I know I'm not going to get to post for another six weeks. But if I have the idea, I'll throw I'll throw a note that I want to do this. Uh, I'll you know um, if I see a reference of something I like or how I got the question. Like I might be in a forum or I see somebody write it, write a question in a forum. I know I know the answer and I do a quick look to see if I can find it so I can give them the answer. If I can't find it, that's a good blog post for me. So I'll take, make notes of where I got that question from so I can go back once I do the post and actually answer it and drive people to my blog for that answer. Uh, bugs and annoyances, tips, tricks, hints, secrets, all great topics uh, for creating blog posts. Um, and make your post easy, make that content easy to find. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, but you want to think about whenever you're creating the content, well, what will they type into Bing or Google? Um, and make that part of your, part of your um, information whenever you... Uh, uh, whenever you're posting your blog. Cross-link, cross-link, cross-link. Um, what, what I mean by that is um, if you have others that are blogging about the same thing, start developing some, par some partnerships and to, cro to have them cross-link you and you cross-link them. Even if you don't have those relationships already, at least cross-link to yourself. You know, if you've got a blog post and you've got another blog post that's similar or uh, about the same topic, you know, if I, if I do a blog post on SharePoint, um, and I know I've got 20 other SharePoint blogs, even if even some of them were written two years ago, they're still somewhat relevant. I'll put it at the bottom of the blog post, related articles or other articles of interest. Always want to link back and re-promote your own stuff, um, as well as uh, leveraging others and others' relationships to do that as well. 
free stuff, great topics to think, uh, that customers care about, uh, free books, posters, training, all of these things um, customers really go after. And if you do a lot of this stuff, then we'll come back to check to see what, what, what else is out there. So bear that in mind. And uh, uh, answers, downloads, those are some of the things that I do. Syndication is huge. Um, syndication is um, expanding, your, expanding the reach of your content, your message, through other vehicles, other mechanisms. Um, and I, I'll give you some examples in a, in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, but basically, you want to promote, in my case, I promote other people's blogs. And you'll see that um, if I get a chance, I'll switch over to my, uh, to my blog and kind of show you what that looks like. Um, but um, also you want to give others influence because when you give others influence, they're going to be very willing and able uh, and want to give you influence back. What does that mean? Once you start developing your blog, let other people share in the content that you're giving out to your, to your customers, to your audience. So if you've got, to, even if they're in the same business as you, there's no reason why you can't, you know, work together, play together in the same sandbox. You can help each other out. Um, I know I've done that a lot in the in the IT field, um, where I would get referrals from somebody. If, you know, if I could do a bigger job than they could do, or or if I had a small job that, uh, whenever I was in the consulting world, if I had a small job I didn't want to do, I had a lot of people that I turned to that I would refer that work out to. So uh, you know, start leveraging that same kind of a mentality when it comes to when it comes to your blog and um, and expanding your expanding your reach. Um, make things easy for them to syndicate. Um, make things easy easy whenever you're creating the, the, the blog to read, but make it super easy to syndicate. If you go look at some of my blogs, my blog posts, you'll see right in there, tweet this, right? I'll have the text, all I did is copy paste. I have a button that says tweet, right? So they can just hit the, hit the button, it'll automatically fill it all in for them, and all I have to do is send. Make it super simple for your audience to, uh, to re-syndicate that stuff. Um, and I use the Share This. Uh, it's, it's a great tool to be able to, to, uh, uh, to contact people. A key thing to consider here is you want to go. It doesn't matter if you don't have a Twitter account. It doesn't matter if you're not a social person. I wasn't a number of years ago. It, it doesn't matter. It does matter that you are after today, right? Because you need to go to people where they are. If you only go to, if you're, if you're only trying to reach people where you are, you're going to be stuck where you are now, right? You've got to go to where people are, and people are getting more and more and more social. So get involved with social. Even if you're not going to go in there and tweet every day, you don't have to. You just have to have an account so that you can let others leverage that, okay? But you'll see over time that having that account, um, having an ID, and leveraging that ID will actually have, get a lot more people to follow you and get a lot more, a lot more exposure for your blog. And on the bottom of most of my slides, I think I have my URL there if anybody missed it, itproguru.com. Um, so go to where they want to go um, and inspire action. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in a, in, a, in a second. So what I mean by inspire action is what do you want them to do? Well, you want them to read your post. You want to read my content. Uh, in my case, in Microsoft's case, I want to download the trial, the, the trial evaluation software or whatever. Um, or, you know, I want them to achieve certification on an individual product. So I'm writing my content to help them achieve that, those objectives. Right, your your objectives might be, uh, you know, if you're if you're a designer or, or something, or if you're a, a, a web development person, um, your objective might be to get them to use you instead of uh, going after some of the free stuff that they can do on GoDaddy or whatever. Right, so you'll you you know develop your content for that particular market for for what it is that you want to get out of there um, and give them something that they'll want and um, help them understand why they want it from you. Um, so what does your audience want to do? They want to solve problems. They want to learn. Um, they want to save time. Um, in my case, they want to achieve certification. In your case, it might be they want to save money. They want to save time. Uh, they want to find the right, uh, the right place to go, the right thing to do. Whatever it is, figure out what that is and, and, and make sure that your content inspires them to act in, in those regards. Um, and then, of course, tie everything together. Tie all your ideas together. Um, uh, because what you want to do is you want to marry what you want with what they want. Whenever you can tie those two together, then it's a win-win. And so whenever you're creating a blog post, again, I'll give you lots of ideas in, in just a couple minutes, but whenever you're creating a blog post, super, super important that you're able to, to tie those two together. If you're just out there blogging because you, somebody told you it was a great idea to blog, you're not going to get anything out of it. You know what? It's not going to last. It's, it's just not. You're going to put six months into it, and you're going to say, what's the point? I've gotten nothing out of it, right? Figure out what you want, figure out what they want, marry the two. It's the only way you'll have long-term success. 
Logging by the numbers. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, there's a lot on this slide. It's an eye chart. There's even a lot more in the notes. Um, what I really want you to do with this, oh, I have that bubble right in the way. So um, what I really want you to do with this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over some of, the, some of the key points here. But there's a ton of tips in this. Each one of these 10-point items has a number of things built inside of them. So when it comes to content, um, a few things. One, use your tags. Use your H1 tags, your H2 tags. They really are important. They really are, okay? A lot of the meta tags, not so important, but some of them are. If you're using, um, if you're using those meta tags, um, they're not a total waste. Even though they're not nearly as important as they were, say, 10 years ago, they're not a total waste. A description tag is an example. A description tag will be used by Google whenever, whenever a search result comes up to actually put that in the description of the blog post. Instead of just coming up with the, the first parts of the, of the actual article, it'll put that description in there for you. So leverage the technology that's available to you Within the, within the blogging platform, um, help yourself cross posting. Um, oh, actually, let me uh, one more thing on the on the first one. Uh, relevant theme um, topics. Whenever you're whenever you're doing this, um, you want to make sure that um, the the blog that you're using or the blog theme that you're using, the blog ideas, the the blog name, everything ties around a central idea, a central. You know, what do you want? To, what do you want to get out of it? Um, you wouldn't, as an example, want to create a blog, um, a blog site where the, the title is, um, um, you know, expert uh, web development, and then just talk all about personal stuff, right? It just doesn't make sense. You want to make sure that everything about your blog says what and it reinforces the the um, underlying messaging that you want to get out. Um, help yourself cross posting, helping others. Um, same kind of thing. Syndication. Uh, I, I've given some examples here. Ulitzer, Petri, Technorati, others. Um, uh, don't you know? Leverage uh, leverage these other popular sites. So a lot of times I'll go to these other sites uh, and I will post a summary of a blog post and link back to my blog for full details. Some sites won't let you do that. They'll make you do uh, you know they want. Uh, good information in there. They won't let you do summaries. So what you do is you put good information in there, and then you hold something back, right? At the very end of the blog post, for more information or to hear to, to see more about X, Y, or Z, click here to read more, and then link back to your blog post to get additional information, right? So you're leveraging the power of these really really big engines that have millions of people hitting them every every month that linking back to you. And of course, once people find you and they bookmark you, I mean, you want to get them to the point where they are bookmarking you. Once they find you, then that's repeat customers um, day in and day out, or certainly month in and month out. Um, but don't just copy. You know, um, change things up a little bit and always link back to the source. Um, speaking of uh, source, actually, let me, let, me, let me hit the next one first. High performance. Um, I actually moved my Microsoft blog off of Microsoft's property because it was wicked slow. Um, and um, the performance is really, really important. I know you've heard a lot about performance today in the different sessions that you've been to, especially with phones and everything. Um, performance really, really, really is important. Um, so there's, if you're on a blogging platform, there's lots of free blogging platforms out there. In fact, Microsoft has one I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, there's lots of uh, free blogging platforms out there. Just make sure that it's performing. Make sure that, you, that your customers aren't waiting, because if they are, you know they're not waiting. They're moving on, right? Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, content really is key. Make sure that the content that you're putting together tells a story, it answers a problem, solves, solves a problem. Uh, use keywords. Uh, tell the complete story, not part of the story, not half the story. Um, make sure that they get the solution while they're on your site. You don't want them to get half the solution and have to go somewhere else to get the other half of the solution. Do the entire solution. Um, videos totally rock the numbers, totally. The problem with videos is they're not searchable, right? So what I do for my videos, all of my videos, well, one day they will be searchable, right? They kind of are now, but not really. Um, um, what I do with my videos is I'll do a summary of everything that's in the video, and I'll put that as part of the blog post. Right? You, then you obviously you want to leverage um, um, uh, the larger sites like uh, YouTube, etc., um, to get that content out as well, to get more exposure to your content. Um, any other? Uh, uh, okay, so good URLs, permalink structure. You want to have. You want to make sure. You know, 
I, I see a lot of people that are using WordPress. They'll they'll have the you know for the URL they'll have the uh, the ID of the blog or they'll have the ID of the attachment or the ID of the the the, um, the pictures or whatever. Don't do that. Don't use those. Just don't. Um, if you go into the details of, a, of an individual document that you've uploaded, on the right-hand side, there's a, there's a link that says file name, right? Copy and paste that and use that in your URL. Use the full name. It really makes a difference when it comes to search. Um, most important, though, is getting started. Uh, creating or, or improving your blog, do it. Start now. Start today. Start tomorrow. Start this weekend. Go slow. If you go spend 30 hours in the next two weeks doing this, you're going to get burned out. Don't do it. Trust me. Don't do it. Um, start slow. Get your blog up and running. It takes about oh, 20 minutes on almost any free platform to get up and running on WordPress. Um, and yeah. Then on your post it says uncategorized. Yes. Is there a reason for that? That's okay, so I'm not a fan of uncategor uncategorized content, but. There's a difference between categories and tags. A lot of times I don't use categories. I use them for specific things. I'm not kind of beyond the scope to be able to, to go into a lot of detail like that. You definitely, I use tags more than I use categories for my posts. Um, but I do on occasion, and I started more recently using more categories for different things. So one example is step-by-step. -step. All of my step-by-step, -step, I use a category um, because I'm going to do more stuff with that later. So uh, grab, download the slides and read the notes on this slide. That there's, a, there's a lot of things there. Um, speaking of free WordPress site, this one is very, very, very fast. Okay, Windows Azure, you can get a free account on your aka.ms slash wccloud. Uh, you might see these handouts um, running around. I've got some up here if you want to come and grab one. Um, there's also some on the front table. Um, but you can, uh, this is running on window on Microsoft's data center, right? Very, very fast, uh, high, uh, uh, high speed upload and download. Um, you can run. You can run on Linux. You can run on Windows. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your stack is. All of it runs great on Windows Azure. Um, and if you're a small business or a startup business, you might want to make a note of this also. AK.ms WC dash Bispark. Um, WC stands for WordCamp um, dash Bispark. Um, it gives you a whole bunch of free software as well as two hundred dollars a month for three years worth of Azure. So you basically can get your entire site and everything that goes into it for free for three years utilizing this program. If you're a web developer, especially because this program is designed for startup, small business, particularly in, uh, in the development side of things. So definitely you want to do this um, and get your website up and running on uh, Windows Azure for free. All right, I've got some samples here. I'm not going to read, read through these. I, I just want to, a couple things that I want to highlight on this slide, though, um, is you never know what's going to be a big hit and what's going to get a lot of big numbers. Um, I know I've spent days on individual posts to find out that I got 4,000 people that hit it and just totally depressing. Um, and then I'll spend five minutes on a quick how to do something and in less than three weeks I have 50,000 people that have seen it. It just blows me away. You just never know. So um, I've given you some samples about some of the posts that I've done that have gotten good numbers. Um, and one thing that you'll notice is like this, like this first couple of posts, every month that I go in there, it's, it's increased by another 2,000, even though those, some of those posts are a couple of years old. Um, the content is good not only for today, but for tomorrow as well. And the more generic your content is, or the, the more your content is relevant for a long period of time, the better you'll get out, the better results you'll get out of that content. Not only that, those posts that are really good in terms of getting drawing good numbers, Make sure you're advertising on those posts. Go back in after the fact, and I'll show you how, later in a little bit how to show how to tell which posts are good. But go back after the fact and add your little advertisements in there. You know, in the middle, put a hey, did you know we're offering this class coming up next month, or we're offering this, we're offering this, or we're offering that. Put your own little advertisement in there, or or go in there and promote some of your other stuff that you want people to find out about in those heavy duty posts. Um, some of the tools that I use, Snagit or Camtasia. Um, uh, what time are we in? 2.20? Can somebody check for me? 2.10. 2.10, okay. Um, so Camtasia and Snagit, uh, both by TechSmith, uh, two of the tools that I use. So if you see all the pictures and stuff in my blog uh, with all the annotations and stuff on it, almost all of them come from Snagit. So um, some awesome tools. They're relatively inexpensive. I don't remember what it was. I think it was a couple hundred bucks. Um, but awesome tools that make your site look really good. Syndication. 
Um, so when it comes to syndication, you don't want to just copy. Uh, the, the purpose of syndication is to get your message out to the broadest possible audience. Right? It's having other people refer back to your content and share. That's what syndication is all about. And um, what you want to try not to do is you want to try not to copy because there's actually, um, whenever you have a bunch of different copies of the same content out there, it actually decreases the value of that content from the search engine standpoint. Um, so there are some, some uh, if you have lots of different copies of the exact same content, it decreases the value of that content to the search engines. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to change it up a little bit. You want to change the articles a little bit if you can. You go, if you go look at mine, you'll see that there's lots of copying, right? I have two different blogs. A lot of times I just dual post to both of them. So you can do it. Um, and also whenever I do some syndication, I'll, I'll also copy. So I don't, I don't always do this, um, but um, it's just something you, you need to know that you shouldn't just, you know, post the same message to 20 different sites um, because that's actually going to decrease the value of your main site. What you really want to do instead is give them some pieces of it and then hold something back and put and always link back to your own site so that you're getting the love. Not only that, but um, you want to you want to make sure that your source um, uh, is the is considered the master, right? If you've got 20 copies of the same post out there, how does the search engine know whose post this really is that's being copied, right? Um, so there's there's some tools, and I've got some information. I'm not sure if it's in the notes or it's in one of my next slides. Um, but you want to make sure that you are the author on that, and that whenever you're posting somewhere else, whenever you're syndicating, you're always linking back to that source, that master. Uh, yeah, I do. I have it on this slide. Um, so you don't want to. You want to make sure that um, um, your um, references to your. Okay, so let me let me let me do it this way. References to your blog increases influences or adds influences. Any content that copies your blog actually reduces your influence. Okay, because now as soon as there's a copy of it, the uh, the search engines don't know which one is the most, which one is actually the authoritative copy of it. Um, so it reduces your relevance. Um, it's not significant, you know, but it is a reduction. And if you, the more times you have it out there, the more, the more significant it becomes. Any content not on your blog that you author adds influence to you. Let me say that again. Really, really important, even though it's in small text. Any content that you create that's not on your blog where you're the author increases your influence. And that's not a small number. That's a really, really big number. Okay, so when I'm posting a blog on Spiceworks, or if I'm posting a blog on Ulitzer, I actually, my blog, even though it's not even posted on my blog, gets a lot of extra relevance because that means somebody else believes in me and the one that I say is authoritative. Okay, so whenever you can blog, on, whenever you can write articles on, on, on another powerful platform, definitely do it. That's going to give you a lot of extra influence. Um, any content not on your blog, okay, so I did that. Um, um, okay, so always refer to your blog as the source and you as the author. Um, even It's not always possible, okay? Um, but sometimes it is. So let me give you an example. I have a TechNet blog. And if you were going to be a, a guest speaker on my IT Pro Guru blog, you could be the author because I could set you up as a user and you're actually doing the post. It's in your name. In some cases, whenever you're syndicating, you don't have that capability where whoever the owner of that blog is, they, they are actually posting it on your behalf, that's still a good thing to do. It's still a good thing to do because it's gonna, that information is going to get to a lot more people and it's going to be re referring back to you. But um, just be smart about it. Uh, you want to make sure that everything always leans, link, links back to you, links back to you, um, and that you're syndicating smartly. Yes. Um, what about Google authorship? Do you use that? I do use Google authorship. I think it might be in the notes of that slide. Okay. Uh, actually, I think it's on this one. Um, I do use uh, authorship. Authorship is important. So if you, and not only Google, but also the other search engines like Bing. Yep. Um, you definitely want to set up Google authorship, Bing authorship. Um, uh, basically, you're, you're, what that does is it puts an, a, a, an, author, a, an authority um, file on the blog that says you are the master of that content or you're the, you're the official authority of that content. You definitely want to do that. It, it does increase uh, quite significantly when it comes to search. Um, I, some other examples here that I have of other syndication places, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Spiceworks, Pinterest, uh, 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 Delicious, uh, Reddit. Um, Ulitzer, 
all different places. And in your, whatever your line of business is, these sites will be different. Go find them. Go find the sites in your line of business. If you're in the developer world, there are a ton of them. I mean, a ton of them. If you're in the photography world, there are a ton of them. So um, in your world, whatever your world is, go find those different sites where you can do the syndication, where you can do guest blogging um, and, and, and draw attention back to your blog. Always hold something back. That last thing, always hold something back. Ice cream on top for the ice cream, go here, right? Whatever that big thing is that they, that they want to do, um, have them go back to your blog to get the, get the, to get the bottom line of the, uh, of the post. Um, link, link, and let others link. Um, be generous. If you're generous to others, they will want to be generous to you. So as you're posting, be generous. Um, uh, absolutely link to, link to other people. Um, and make it easy for readers to share content. Um, you know, share this, add this. Uh, we talked about those buttons. Um, and um, don't just stick with the ones that you know. You might only know Twitter. But don't just use Twitter. Use, goes back to go where, they, go where your customers are. Go where their customers might be. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead to uh, eye tracking F pattern. So notice on these blog posts, this was a um, a study that was done to see what was you know see what the I I I researched to see what the pattern was of people that are looking at blog posts and what it um, and where the where the hot um, parts of the where the eyes focus whenever they went into a blog page and what they found out was it really kind of created an F pattern. Um, so bear that in mind whenever you're creating your content to make the most important stuff stand out right there. So if you've got a big image that takes up your entire page and they've got to scroll down to get to the content, the meat, eh, not necessarily a good thing. From a blog, from a website standpoint, from a, a looks pretty standpoint, it might be a good thing. But from the standpoint of, um, um, of um, increasing your reach or getting information in front of the user, not necessarily the best thing, okay? In my case, I want to get information in front of the user. I put, and uh, we'll look at a second of my blog, I put the information on my blog that is um, most important to me right in that F pattern, and you'll see that. Or if you go to my blog, you'll see what that is. Um, and I, I also have my social media in that spot, right? So you'll see that all my social stuff, I want people to share my stuff. Right, so it's right in that F spot. So search engine optimization, how I got um, to 10,000, uh, and a large part of how I got to 30,000. Um, headings, tags, H1 through H6, we talked about. Author tags, I knew I had a slide on it. Um, uh, you definitely want to do your author tags. Um, meta tags are still useful, but not a silver bullet. Um, post titles, oh, post titles to me are everything. Okay? I see people do these like one, two, three word post titles and they expect uh, Google to find them. Keep dreaming, right? So what I do whenever I, whenever I do a, um, a, um, a post title, what I do is I figure out what I want the title to be and then I figure out what people are going to search on if, they, if I want them to find this and I put those words at the end of the post title. So it's in the title itself. Um, you know, the, 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 the criteria for whenever a search engine um, um, uh, brings up a, a post. You know what it is. The number one thing, URL, right? The number two thing, the post title, the, the H1 headers, okay? Um, guess what? In WordPress, if you've got it configured correctly, you're going to get both of those with every one of your posts. You're going to get the title and the URL, right? Now, the deeper it is in the URL, the lower the relevance in terms of the search engine. But I would rather it be deeper um, um, I mean, I'd rather it be there and deeper than not be there at all. But, if you, like, if you go look at my post, all of my posts are only two levels deep. They're IT Pro Guru slash expert slash the post name. So I, I don't have, like, a whole bunch of folders that I'm drilling down. Um, and um, so just something else, something else to consider. Um, monitor your site. You know what? I can give you a ton of tips, but you know what? The best tips are going to come from you monitoring your site. Because um, you'll look at the post, you'll you know you'll spend a bunch of time on a post and you'll see it does nothing. You'll spend no time on a post and see it does it does great. You'll figure out what really works for you and your customers as you monitor. A couple of tools that I use. Um, 
Um, so analytics, Bing Webmaster, Google Webmaster, um, get clicky, it's just clicky.com now. Um, I use I use clicky, I also use Analytica. Um, so I use, a, I use a bunch of different tools. You really only need uh, one. You should use your, your Bing Webmaster tools and your Google Webmaster tools, but definitely have, uh, have something that you're looking at. Um, Clicky.com, super cheap, um, and super, super easy to follow. So this, this I would say, is really kind of for the, for the starters. Um, and it does give you a lot of really good information on your, on your post. So you can actually see how important posts are. You can actually see what people are searching into, putting into the web browser to get to your post. Where are they linking from? Who's linking back to you? Right? All of these things, all great information. So I've actually, I've actually um, using analytics, I found out, I learned that Microsoft support was actually linking back to some of my how-to articles on, um, um, on my blog. Now, guess what I did? I called Microsoft support and said, how can I get more of my blog posts up there? Because the numbers were through the roof on those particular posts. Everybody went to support, they came to my blog, Microsoft support. I didn't talk to Microsoft to have them put up there. They found it. This is the right solution, and they posted it, and they posted it back to back to, to my blog. So, I, if I would not have been looking at analytics, I would have never known that. I would have never been able to develop those relationships to get more and more stuff on the support side. Um, consistency does matter. Um, I would say at least weekly, but. At least every two weeks. If you can't do it weekly, do every two weeks, a couple of hours a week. If that's all you can do, that's all you can do. Um, but uh, it, timing does matter. Um, there's a lot of good information on search um, and, and, and syntax. You want to, uh, you know, you want to read a book or read a bunch of blog articles on search engine optimization um, and um, um, uh, making your site more relevant. There's lots. There's tons of information out there. So uh, I have. Uh, uh, I have some resources here, uh, calls to action. Uh, first of all, uh, the slide deck is itpoguru.com slash resources, or go to my blog and download it there. Uh, search optimize your blog, right? Go in, make sure you're using those, uh, those tags. Go in, make sure you have the relative author in there. Do, do those things, those are important. Um, and engage customers on other sites. So go where your customers are. If your customers are out there learning how, if you're a photographer and your customers are out there with their camera trying to figure out how to, I don't know, get rid of red eye on the picture instead of having to do it after the fact, do a blog post on it, right? So they find you. And you know what? Maybe whenever they want to have professional pictures taken, they'll come to you because they know you, right? That's what I mean by go to where your customers are. Um, it doesn't have to be something that's relevant to you and your business right now. But if it's a customer, I want to get my name in front of them, right? And that's a way to do it. Um, leverage su suggestions to drive impact. Whenever, um, uh, whenever somebody else asks you about something, um, leverage that information, right? When customers ask you a question, think to yourself, what would be the value of me, um, the information that I've just given that customer, what would be the value of me putting that information online and having others see me See me and my blog as the expert in this area, in this arena, right? Uh, so becoming an expert in your field of study, a blog is an awesome way to do that. So I have um, zero minutes left. Um, what I will say though is go out and look at my, look at my blog, um, itfoguru.com. You know, a, a few things that you'll notice. Um, I have the scrolling uh, um, pictures on, along the top. Uh, now I know a lot of people are talking about images and making sure your images are small and don't do a lot of images, and if you're going to do them, don't do them on the top and all this stuff. You've learned a lot of things about uh, images. My site is not nearly as fast as I'd like it to be. I do, need to do a lot to, to speed it up, but I've got it on super, super fast hardware and super, super fast internet connection, so the only time I'm going to have an issue is when it's somebody else that's on really slow stuff, and I've got to, I've got to work on that, and I know I've got to work on that. But I would encourage you to go check out my blog. There is a link on the top of my blog. Um, one of them is like the, the Cloud OS. Uh, drill down on that on that uh, image and kind of look at that blog post. That's an example of where I'm getting the I'm getting the community involved with my blog. I'm giving them my reach. Okay, so I've got guest bloggers out there. I posted one this morning um, where Robert Borges um, is the author. Um, so I've linked to his post. He wrote a post on my behalf, and I'm linking back to his blog. He's going to get uh, probably easily twenty thousand unique visitors in the next two months 
for that blog post that he's done when he normally gets about 2,000. So leverage the influence of others that you know. By the way, here's a hint. You now know me since you've been to more of my presentations. So if you go to my blog, do, uh, click on the About page. Um, and, uh, and the About link, there's a drop-down menu there. Um, become a guest blogger. If it's technology-related, um, I'll absolutely post it. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're a photographer to make it technology-related, you better be telling me something technical about a camera, how to do something in a camera. So like, that's okay. Um, you know, I took these really cool pictures. It's not a technology post. You, you get what I mean. So um, I'm happy to help you guys any way that I can. Reach out to me on Twitter at itproguru um, or my blog at itproguru.com. And uh, um, I do have a drawing for some cool stuff. It's on this on this handout. If you want to go check it out. Um, it's also my most recent blog post I just posted this morning. So if you go to my blog, you can read all the details there um, about how to win some really cool prizes. Uh, a couple quick questions. You guys are free to go. We're out of time, but I will stick around for a couple minutes to answer questions if you have them. Thanks a lot. Yeah.